G'day everyone and welcome to TYT Interviews. So as you know, it's right before the midterm elections and unfortunately Republicans like Trump have been extraordinarily effective at communicating their message, um, getting it out there in today's information-based society. And that's possibly why we have the situation that we have today in the White House. Uh, so our guest today is here to talk about a new approach to communicating for politicians that brings the principles of storytelling in from Hollywood rather than using the traditional ways of communicating from journalism or history. He comes from the world of politics from a really different perspective, which is in his most recent book, which is called Houston, We Have a Narrative. He was once a scientist, which is how I got to know his work, but he left science and became a filmmaker and then went back to science and environmentalism to share what he'd learned from Hollywood uh, about mass communication. So welcome to the show, Dr. Randy Olson. Great to be here, Jay. <laughs> now, Randy, I see you wearing a hat. Yes, and it has on it the slogan of the Democratic Party. Ah, uh, there's nothing on it. And I believe the Democratic Party doesn't have a slogan. <laughs> well, a lot of people would say that the Democratic Party doesn't need a slogan. And a lot of people would be wrong about that because in today's world of information overload and excess, you've got to have the ability to boil down your message into a small, concise, punchy, even rhythmic slogan um, if you want to try and reach outside of your core demographic of just the people that are already on board. Now, you've said a lot about how Donald Trump is good, good at communicating. So do you think that Donald Trump is good at boiling down his message to a slogan. Well, I'm hesitant to say that Donald Trump is good at anything because I absolutely despise the guy, but. But? <laughs> but let me put it this way. Um, our society is run by politics and um, there's a traditional approach of journalists and historians to, that understands politics pretty well. But we have a problem, <laughs> which is that our current president didn't come from that traditional route. He came through the world of, of entertainment media and even Hollywood. Therefore, we need a new approach to understanding his communication dynamics. That's what this is all about. So I want to talk about the and, but, therefore, those three words in a second. Uh, but uh, before we do that, you've written a blog post where you talk about the five elements of communication that Donald Trump really has nailed down. And I want to start with the first one, which is his slogan, Make America Great Again. Yeah, well, sadly, you know, I've come to realize that he embodies the principles that my book is about, these narrative principles. It's not in a cerebral way. I don't think he could teach a course in this. He just at a gut level understands us. And it begins with this slogan. So he came out of the gates four years ago with that slogan, Make America Great Again. And that slogan arises straight out of this template, which is and, but, and, therefore. <laughs> um, and these are the three central words of narrative. I adapted this and presented my book. Um, we call it the ABT template. And I kind of picked it up from the South Park guys. <laughs> the South great. Park guys? Yeah, because in a documentary in 2011, they talked about these three words, about the uh, what they call their rule of replacing. They go into a script and to strengthen the storytelling, they work on replacing the word and with either but or therefore. Uh, when I heard that, I couldn't believe, I never heard such a simple rule in all my years of film school. And I began researching it, I actually tracked it back to the 1980s, a guy named Frank Danielle, great screenwriting legend, um, talked about and, these three words, and, but, and therefore, the ABT. And this becomes the narrative template that's now at the core of everything that I do. All right, how does that apply to Trump's so the message. way it applies to Trump is from the very beginning, he had a clear single statement ABT of his campaign, which is that we are a great and mighty nation, but we have slipped in the world, therefore it's time to make America great again. That's the narrative core, it's four years later, he hasn't changed a word or a thought about that, and he's still messaging around, messaging around that same slogan. So America is a great and mighty nation, but, but we've, we've slipped, slipped in the world, therefore. Make America Great Again. Exactly. It's definitely been very effective at mobilizing his base. I'll give him that. Um, your second point that you talk about uh, when you're talking about Trump and his communication principles is the theme of the one word. Yes, and so in the book, I developed this template. We call it the Dobjansky. It's adapted from a famous quote. And it's a single sentence of fill in the blanks that helps you get to if there is a single word at the core of your message. And the template is nothing in blank makes sense except in the light of blank. And Donald Trump solved that from the beginning. 
his answer to that would be nothing in America today makes sense except in the light of greatness. Greatness. And greatness and great, and that's in his slogan. And you see him messaging around that endlessly. He starts and ends speeches with this word great. We were great, we gotta be great again, yada, yada. Whether you love it or you hate it, analytically, you've got to accept that he had that one word at the core of his message, and the Democrats never did. All right, well, uh, I come from the science show, so I w you've been talking a lot about the tools you've been using to measure analytically yes. how good Trump is at a, as a communicator. And one of the tools you're using to analyze his speeches is called the narrative index. Tell me about that. That plays off these two key words. These are the two fundamental structural words of narrative that we use day in and day out, the two most common words of agreement and contradiction. This is how we communicate. We talk about things we can agree on, this and this and this and this, then we point out contradictions. And when you look at language, you see these two words are extremely common. So I began to notice that if you just take a speech or a debate performance, the transcript, and start to calculate this ratio of but to and, the numbers start to jump out. It's very clear patterns. And I started to see that no politician was anywhere close to Trump all the way up until when he clinched the election, then he had speech writers and things started to change. But hmm. up until then, his average was a 29 for his speeches and debate performance. Hillary Clinton was less than half of that. Her speeches were characterized by this word. I'm gonna do this and this and this and this, a fundamental difference in how they communicated. That's what first started to alarm me and think that the guy might stand a, a chance of winning. Well, anyone that's been to a cocktail party knows that when you get stuck with someone that's boring, they're always like, and this and that and that. And anyone that's ever heard the phrase, I love you, but <laughs> knows how powerful that one is. So I can see how having more buts. Jay, Jay you're, you're a great host. But, <laughs> all right, moving along. Uh, the fourth point you make in your blog post is about insult names. And this is terrible. Saying. From the beginning, he had these insult names, Little Marco and Lying Ted and Crooked Hillary and Pocahontas, on and on. And uh, the Democrats just chuckled at them, ridiculed them. I think they felt like this was the old thing of sticks and stones can break my bones, but names will never hurt me. But we're in a different world today. We're in the information era, and these things do matter. And these insult names of him were like you know wolves in sheep's clothing. They had this outer veneer that seemed kind of silly and fun, but these things stick, and they're damaging over the long term because they don't go away. And this is the same thing as stereotypes. And minorities figured this out long ago, that you have to attack these things and not let them stand. But he's gotten away with everything, and people have just laughed at him, made jokes about it. Just two weeks ago, I saw Chris Matthews on Hardball chuckling about the latest one, which is the failing New York Times. Yeah. This stuff is not entertainment. He's using entertainment because he knows how seductive it is. Yeah, I think Democrats are a bit like scientists that we, we don't think that there's a simple, like, crooked Hillary. No, there's more to the picture than just she's crooked, but yeah. those terms really stick. Perception is reality, exactly. Well, speaking of that, the last point you make in your blog post is about confidence. And this comes straight out of the world of literature, of novels, of movies, of storytelling, which is there's an age-old tradition of what's called the omniscient narrator. And the mass audience, when they listen to a story, they don't wanna hear the inconsistencies in the facts, they just wanna voice a confidence. They don't care about the accuracy, they really don't. That's what storytelling is about. Just tell me a good, consistent story. He knows that at a gut level, and he's used it endlessly, and he gets to these solutions really quickly by telling lies, and he doesn't have to bother with any nuance. It's very profound what he does. It's profound. Uh, some might say he's lying, but I know he's lying very confidently and therefore getting away with it. So it's a... Um, therefore. Yeah, it's it's horrifying when we see how effective he's been at communicating, but I think that there's a lot we can actually really learn from Trump when we really break down what he's doing. So with that in mind, I wanna talk a little bit about slogans in the campaign um, that we've seen. It's the midterms, there's a lot of interesting races going on, and I want you to analyze the slogans from some of these races and tell me what you think they're doing right and what you think they're doing wrong. So I wanna start, start off with a tough race between two women in Arizona. We've got Martha McSally, the Republican. Uh, her slogan is, will you stand with Martha McSally? And then we've got Kristen Sinema, the Democrat, who her uh, campaign slogan is an independent voice for Arizona. And I originally wanted to look at, at their speeches, but it turned out it's too hard to get the speeches from the candidates. But it, every candidate's got a website, and ideally they've got a slogan on there. So that's what you see. And so, yeah, starting with those two, uh, Martha McSally is the military veteran and has got uh, two slogans on there, will you stand with the word stand in caps um, with Martha McSally and another stand. one, will you stand and the other one is make no mistake. 
So here's the simple test that I suggest for these slogans. And, and the problem is people just seem to have nothing more for creating slogans than just a gut feeling. Oh, that feels like a good one. There's actually a tiny bit of science to this stuff of this and button, therefore, narrative structuring. And what I would suggest is this word right here, therefore, Put this before a slogan and see how it feels because a slogan ought to be a statement of consequence. It's some action that your candidate is going to do, ideally. A call to action. The call yeah. to action, ideally, exactly. It doesn't have to be, there's some exceptions, but in general, it's a pretty good rule. And this turns out to be a good litmus test of what makes a decent slogan. So let's try it with some of these. So the other one she has is make no mistake. Try it out, therefore, make no mistake. It's pretty tough, bold that statement. Works. It's works. kind of vague, but it works. It rolls right off there. It's got, it's conveying confidence at least. And and therefore, will you stand with Martha McSally? That's not bad. But then we look at Kristen Sinema, who I think is a really charismatic candidate. I wish that her people could do a little better than this because her quote slogan, all I could find was an independent voice for Arizona. Try it with this, therefore, an independent voice for Arizona. It's just not saying anything. Doesn't have any narrative content to it. What you want is some source of tension in there, um, some sort of contradiction. So that could be better. At least something active. So if you're part of Kristen Sinema's campaign, get some tips from this guy. Uh, <laughs> Race number two is the race in Tennessee between Phil Bredesen. So he's the Democrat and his campaign slogan is working together to get things done for Tennessee. Yeah. You wanna talk about that Well, one let's talk about both of these. Go ahead and say okay, Marsha Blackburn. So Marsha Blackburn, the Republican, is Tennessee values first, Tennessee values always. And okay. you know, I think the default is if you can't think of anything clever, at least just make a blunt statement that's true. And that's sort of what both of them seem to have gone <laughs> with. Therefore, working together to get things done for Tennessee, yay, that's good enough. Uh, therefore, Tennessee values first, Tennessee value always. There's no contradiction in there. There's no tension, there's no narrative component to it. It's just a flat, it's just an and, and, and type of thing. Um, as we were talking about, yeah. you can do better than that. It's like I stand for working families. Yeah. yeah no one yeah, is don't disagreeing we all? with that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like children's education. Yes. You know, yeah. <laughs> all right, I see how, see, you know, if you can't think of something smart, we'll just be like Tennessee values. All right, <laughs> let's switch to Kansas. Now, this is an interesting race. It's Laura Kelly from the Democrats. We are no longer ceding the state. We are determined to take it back versus Chris Kobach. Here's a terrible man, also a Republican, and his slogan is time to lead the conservatives to fix Topeka. Okay, so Topeka. this is the race, the, yeah, this is the race for governor, um, is my the home race state. for governor. Yes, and <clears throat> you know, I mean, bless her heart, she's a great candidate, but she needs something better for uh, communications there. That's two entire sentences. It's They're, not really a slogan. It's not a slogan, exactly. It's just, we are no longer ceding this state. We're determined to take it back. Shouldn't yeah. the slogan be like, just do it? Yeah, yeah, it, that's it, exactly. And, <laughs> and by the way, try that one out. Therefore, just, just do, do it. Just do it. Yes, there's your, Works. your litmus test. Um, his thing is a little more of a slogan, therefore time to lead. Uh, the irony is that his second part, lead the conservatives to fix Topeka. They're the ones that broke it. Sam Brownback <laughs> broke the state, so he's <laughs> claiming to go fix it. Uh, now, the next one is one of the most important and best examples. So. Oh, gosh. Okay, the next one is a very interesting race in Texas. As we know, Ted Cruz running for the Senate for the Republicans. His slogan is tough as Texas. And Beto O'Rourke, our favorite civil fox running for the Democrats, Texas <laughs> deserves better. <laughs> what do you think of this one? They okay. both seem pretty good. These these are both ex, uh, pretty close to excellent. And you know, try them both with the therefore test. Um, for Beto, therefore, Texas deserves better. That's excellent, that's powerful. Think about the, job, the narrative element to it. It's got contradiction. Uh, therefore, Texas deserves better, better than what? It means that there's something that we're saying that in reference to. More importantly is when these things are structured well, you can feel the ABT that came before them. You can feel that what this is about is Texas has had some good leadership, but right now it's pretty lousy. Therefore, Texas deserves better. I would love that slogan on this hat. That would totally work. Um, it's inspiring. The what only about America deserves better. Would that be a good yeah, Democrat? Why don't you start that campaign? Exactly. I'll take my million dollars now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and you know what? The only problem is that Ted Cruz has also got a really pretty good slogan there. Uh, therefore, tough as Texas. And that's kind of playing off the don't mess with Texas uh, theme that's been around for many, many years. And you could, you could feel the ABT before that, which is, you know, politics or something we'd like to have go smoothly, but the fact is it's a really cruel world out there. Therefore, Texas needs someone who is as tough as Texas. 
That's a good slogan. They're both good slogans. It's an intense race, as you know, right now. Yeah, and it makes sense because Beto O'Rourke obviously is incredibly talented as a politician. Um, it seems like you know Ted Cruz, as much as we don't like him here on this show, um, he has run for president and got pretty he's close. A very so very smart, got, highly educated, smart, smart guy. Smart yes, guy. Exactly. He's obviously yeah. got good people around him. So yeah. um, I want to talk about a different slogan now. Not we're going to talk yes. about some more slogans in a minute, but. Um, the group Swing Left have been doing some fabulous work to uh, flip the house yes. and, and uh, they're working really hard on the left. They've got a slogan called Don't Despair, Mobilize. Don't Despair, Mobilize. What and do you I think of that? I love that one. That is that is awesome. That's exactly what you want. How you does know? it go for you, therefore, Tess? Therefore, don't despair, mobilize. It's, it's consequence. It's pushing that direction. And you can feel the ABT before that, you know. Um, we lost the last presidential election, some people were bummed out, but sitting around depressed isn't gonna win anything for us. Therefore, don't despair, mobilize. That's a great slogan. That is a great slogan. Good yes. job, Swing Left. Yes. Uh, great organization. <laughs> Let's talk about some more races. So there's some, a few more some interesting more. ones. Oh, here, comes, here comes my favorite of all. New York governor, <laughs> um, we've got Andrew Cuomo. Okay, all right, let, let me tell these, <laughs> right, let me tell these right. two. Okay, all right, so we got the Republican challenger upstart who I don't even know who he is and on his website, he's got a whole paragraph of text and then for lack of anything better, he's got right at the end, three words, let's believe again. It's not even clear what he's talking about believing in. So it just doesn't really have much of a slogan. I don't think he's much of a threat, he isn't. Uh, Andrew Cuomo, who's in the catbird seat, you know, he's gonna do fine. But his slogan is, and let's try it with the therefore word, therefore together ahead. First of all, together ahead anyway doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, it's together very... ahead. Where does it come from? What's the ABT before that? I just don't get it. And actually, I think I can tell you where this probably came from, which is I think it's probably a bunch of people who are fans of Hillary and they're trying to echo her <clears throat> slogan, which was stronger together, which was also a really crummy slogan. Therefore, stronger together. It's like two directions, stronger together. And so together ahead, it just, it, these are not slogans. These are not things that people will think about all day long that will compel them. Texas deserves, set, uh, de deserves better is something people will be at work all day long, mad at the conditions that they're dealing with today and thinking, man, Texas deserves better. That's great. Yeah, and I think that really summarizes what went wrong in the 2016 election where we had Hillary with like, I'm with her. Oh, gee, yeah, no, or exactly. together. But stronger, stronger together. together. No, they just didn't resonate, strong. and and not a surprise because she never had a clear central narrative. She was on Meet the Press in August 2016. Chuck Todd said, "What's the one message at the core of this campaign?" And she just laughed and said, "There's no one message. You know, we stand for this and this and this, and it's that and 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 template that just doesn't work." Which is great. Like as a scientist and a person that really understands policy and is really interested in what she has to say, I was I found that really. It's great, but it doesn't do much about mobilizing people around one issue, like make America great again. You can you can chant that from a stadium. You can't chant, I've got a six point plan to save the environment and here it is from a stadium. So I can see how a slogan unfortunately can oversimplify, but it also really mobilizes people. Let's do one more, uh, the race in Michigan. We've got John, John James, who's the Republican. His slogan is battle tested. And Debbie Stebnow, the Democrat, her slogan is made in Michigan. What do you think of those? Um, you know, battle tested isn't bad. Uh, therefore, battle tested just doesn't tell you much. He's a military veteran, West Point grad, so I'm sure admirable guy. Um, it's just not something that really will stick with people much because there's, there, uh, there's no narrative to it. Again, it's not playing off. There's no source of contradiction. That's, if you wanna get a little bit analytical, that tells you something about these ones that work really well. Um, and Debbie Stabenow, also, you know, that's this is not a real narrative one, but somehow this one kind of resonates. Made in Michigan, it's it's really connecting with this kind of hometown feeling. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not it's not an epic slogan. We might have time for one more slogan, which sure. is the Wisconsin one. So it's Leah Vukmir, the Republican. Her slogan is a clear conservative vision for Wisconsin. And then Tammy Baldwin, the Democrat, her slogan is putting Wisconsin first. What do you think of those? Again, neither of them are narrative. You know, neither of them have a contradiction, really. They're just statements. Uh, clear conservative vision. That's just like back to um, Kristen Sinema, independent voice for Arizona. And Tammy Baldwin putting Wisconsin first. You know, that's, that's okay. I mean, these are things that you can't uh, disagree with, you can't argue with. 
So I, I've seen a really interesting campaign and I'd love your opinion on it. There was just a couple of days ago, there was the Yeti campaign, the, the, the big, Bigfoot big, big campaign yes, yes, yes. that came out of Minnesota. Yes. And Minnesota's third district. Yes. Tell me what you think about this campaign. I think it's one of the best commercials I've ever seen for politics or really takes me back to commercials from long, long ago. It makes me think of the Rainier beer commercials when I was an undergraduate at the University of Washington. Uh, it's awesome, it's hilarious, it's creative. And it's, um, and, and best of all, it's a very creative commercial, really fun, but not surprisingly, you go to website, his website and the slogan on there is really good. Um, their slogan is very simple. Uh, everyone's invited, put that up against this. Therefore, everyone's invited. What a great slogan of inclusiveness and that's his goal is to try and pull everybody together in that, in that district to get behind him. So I think they've probably got some excellent communications folks on his team. It makes a lot of sense that uh, someone who's generating commercials, like it's so easy to make a commercial for an election. You just get some nice footage of them like shaking hands and kissing right. babies and there's your commercial. But they're actually in this really crowded race. You know, there's lots of videos that we're being forced to watch. It's people are getting sick of these boring videos. And then this guy's come out with something that's really creative. There's no surprise that his slogan is great too. And you watch the thing, it's full of this and but therefore dynamic. A little twist and turns as the, the Bigfoot guys tell the whole story of what went on. It's great storytelling. All right, so we've talked a bit about the races. We've talked about the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans and what the Republicans and particularly Trump are doing right to communicate their message in really clear, mobilizing ways. What is your advice for the Democrats? You know, I mean, here specifically, if anybody's working on a campaign or has friends working on a campaign, here are three just very simple things. So number one, start looking at their speeches and very simple, take the transcript, put it in the word processor, count the butts, count the ands. If the ratio, you, you, you multiply it by 100 to get a round number out of it, but if it's less than 10, you've got a problem. You know, if your candidate's just going up there droning on and on, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this, they're not catching the power of narrative. You want it to be somewhere, at least in the teens, ideally in the 20s. And second thing is, is there one word at the core of this whole thing? You know, nothing in our state of Minnesota makes sense except in the light of blank. What do you fill that in with one word, ideally, if you could? And I think, the, the third one is try out the slogan with this therefore test. It's so simple. Just say therefore and say the slogan. What does it sound like to you? Does it fall flat or does it resonate? Therefore, Texas deserves better. Something that'll tap deep inside of people. So that's something that anyone at home watching this can do. If you're, you've got your slogan for your local candidate, if their slogan fails the therefore test, drop them a note and just say, you know, Let's lift our game a little bit because I, you know, I really want to see the progressive succeed. This and is this is safe for kids to do in their own home. Yes, yeah, safe. <laughs> Please try this at home. All right, Dr. Olson. If people want to hear more about your ideas, the and but therefore template and and uh, communicating in this information society, where can they find you? Um, talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> What's your website? Um, RandyOlsonProductions.com, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, and, <laughs> and the book is available from University of Chicago Press. Yep, check out Houston, right. we have a narrative. It's a fantastic book with all the information about how to communicate in today's overwhelmingly information-based world. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on TYT Interviews. If you like the interview that you just watched, I got great news for you. If you become a Young Turks member, you can watch them live as they happen. Only the members get that. You also get uh, Young Turks live. You also get Aggressive Progressive live and Old School live. Everything is available for the members and commercial free. tytnetwork.com slash join.